Uh, this is section G, the last section, radioactivity and particles. Um, and this part, this first part is very brief, looking at atoms and radioactivity. Uh, so we're going to look briefly at the structure of the atom, which is protons, neutrons and electrons. Uh, we'll look at atomic, atomic mass and atomic number, then uh, isotopes, and before looking at ionising radiation and alpha, beta and gamma. Okay, so we'll start with protons, neutrons and electrons, atomic mass and atomic number. So, if we think about, if we take an atom, now the first atom in the periodic table is hydrogen. Now hydrogen has a nucleus, and inside that nucleus there's one proton. And around there orbits an electron. So this here is hydrogen. Now obviously we know hydrogen has one proton, and the total number of things in the nucleus is one, so hydrogen looks like that. Now the second thing in the periodic ta table, which is helium, is obviously different. So helium looks like this. That means inside the nucleus we have one, two protons. And we also have two neutrons because there are four things in the nucleus two of which are protons so we can see our atomic number is two second thing in the periodic table two protons there are four things in the nucleus so two of them must be neutrons they're those blue circles there they're neutral protons are positively charged and orbiting because the helium atom here is neutral Orbiting it, we would have two electrons, which would orbit the nucleus. Okay? Now then. Sometimes, if you look at an element, such as, say, carbon is a famous example. Carbon exists typically as carbon-12. And that means, inside the nucleus, you would have six protons these would obviously be uniformly distributed inside the nucleus and we would have six neutrons now an isotope of carbon would be something which contained a different number of neutrons but the same number of protons now it has to be the same number of protons because the number of protons is what makes carbon carbon. If it contains seven, it would be nitrogen. So the number of protons is what places an element in, the, in its position in the periodic table. It is what makes the element that element. So an isotope of carbon might be carbon-14. Now an isotope, carbon-14, is an isotope of carbon. It contains the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. This makes it an isotope, because this isotope is chemically the same, it's still carbon, however, the nucleus contains two additional neutrons, still six electrons, which is why it behaves the same chemically, but the nucleus is different because it's an isotope, containing a different number of, ne of uh, neutrons, okay? Now, what I want to look at, what I want to focus on, is uh, ionised radiation, which are alpha, beta and gamma. Now, ionising means to be able to remove electrons. So, if something is ionising, it can remove electrons. Now, that can be potentially very, very dangerous, because if we thought, think about our cells in our body, if electrons are ripped off those cells, then it will change the chemical structure of the cells, of our DNA. And that could result in cancers. Uh, it could also kill the cells. So, ionising radiation is potentially very, very dangerous because it can cause cancers, because it can cause malignancies in our cells. It can cause cells to change and mutate. Now, if we think about um, radiation, there are three sorts. We have alpha, beta and gamma. Now the symbol for alpha is this, beta is this and gamma 
is that. Now, alpha is simply a helium nucleus. It's a helium nucleus. Um, so the chemists would see it as a with a plus two charge. So it's a helium nucleus. Beta radiation is simply an electron. So the alpha particle is a particle because it's a helium nucleus. Beta radiation is an electron, so it's a particle. But gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave. It's an electromagnetic wave. It's not a particle, it's a wave. Now briefly, if I just go over the properties. Alpha is extremely ionizing because it's got a really big plus two charge. It's got a large mass and therefore it can easily strip electrons off things it collides with. Because it's so ionizing, it's not very penetrating. So it can be stopped by a sheet of paper or just a few centimeters of air. Beta radiation is quite ionizing. It's a high energy electron, so clearly it's got a charge, it's capable of ionizing through collisions. So beta radiation is slightly less penetrating than alpha. Beta radiation would easily pass through paper, but it would be stopped by aluminium a few centimeters thick. Gamma radiation, however, because it has no charge and it's not a particle, it's just an electromagnetic wave, it is extremely penetrating. It will go through paper, it will go through thin aluminium, it will penetrate even thick lead and concrete. However, it will be significantly reduced by thick lead or very thick concrete. So we can really reduce gamma, but we can't stop it completely. There is there are good signs, however, to gamma in that if it's inside the body, it would be find it quite easy to leave the body without causing too many adverse effects. Whereas alpha, if you had an alpha source inside your body, the radiation, the alpha radiation, would be completely absorbed by your body, and so it would be very, very, very dangerous. So this is what happened when Alexander Litvinenko was poisoned with polonium-210. Whereas when you're injected with a radioactive tracer in order to determine different uh, ailments within the body, um, you would use, typically you would use a gamma tracer which would go into your body and it, the radiation would pass through your body quite easily with very little of it being absorbed by your body and so having very few adverse effects. Okay? Now then. In addition to the simple properties, and many of which you can see on the CGP guide, I just want to go over the equations, because the equations for alpha and beta are very, very important. Now, to remind you of what happens in alpha radiation, okay? So if you imagine you've got uranium-238. Uh, now, all that happens when alpha is given off is the uranium gives off a helium nucleus. It's ejected from the nucleus of the uranium. So this here is an alpha particle. So in order for the equation to balance, the next element must be 92 take away 2, which is 90. 238 take away 4 is 234. Never mind about what it is. What's important though is that you remember the decay equation for alpha, we just write 4 and a 2. You take 4 off the top line and 2 off the bottom line. And that's the decay equation for alpha. Now beta Beta, if we think about the inside of this here would be, say, carbon-14. So if we think about the inside of carbon-14, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 neutrons. 
and we have six protons. Now, obviously these will be evenly distributed throughout the nucleus. Now what can happen is, a neutron can decay into a proton. Now when it does that, because a neutron is neutral with no charge, now it's suddenly got a positive charge, in order for that to balance, it must also liberate an electron. And this electron is where beta radiation comes from. It's when a neutron inside the nucleus decays into a proton. So if we think about this, what happens to the number of protons? Well, the number of protons has now gone up to seven. However, the total number of things in the nucleus, we call them nucleons, hasn't changed because that has changed into that. So it's still 14 on the top. So if we write in the decay equation for beta radiation, it would be, this particular one would be carbon 14, changes into, now there's still 14 on the top, but the proton number, the atomic number, went up by 1. So therefore, to make this balance, the beta radiation must have a 0 on the top, and it must be 7 minus 1 to make 6. So this here is beta radiation, that's beta radiation, the electron. So the decay equation for beta, top number stays the same, bottom number you must remember, because it's 0 minus 1, the bottom number will go up by 1, just remember 0 minus 1. So alpha, you just remember, is 4, 2, and beta is 0 minus 1. Gamma does not have a decay equation because it has um, no mass.